conclave of the College of Cardinals begins. Cardinal Tisserand, Dean of the Sacred College, leads them to the Sistine Chapel, where they are sealed off from the outside world during their deliberations until the next Pope is chosen. This is Cardinal Giuseppe Siri, Archbishop of Genoa. Cardinal Siri was the most popular cleric in Italy at the time of the conclave and the man most observers expected to be proclaimed Pope. He was also Pius XII's desired successor. Pius XII made him Archbishop of Genoa when he was 40 and made him Cardinal when he was just 47, at the time the youngest of the College of Cardinals. He was a staunch traditionalist and adamantly opposed to innovation. He is also the man many believe was the true Pope elected at the 1958 conclave, two days before Angelo Roncalli. Here is the Sistine Chapel, as set for the election of the 262nd Pontiff. Each of the 51 cardinals present occupies his throne during each... This is 77-year-old Cardinal Angelo Roncalli a man who had been dismissed from his teaching position at the Lateran Seminary in Rome for promoting the revolutionary theories of Rudolf Steiner. He was also known to socialize frequently with high-level Freemasons, Communists, and Modernists. A man who Pius XII, at the behest of the FBI and the U.S. State Department, sent off to Venice as Archbishop in hopes to keep him out of trouble for the remainder of his life. Hardly a desirable profile for a papal candidate. Actual round of balloting. The results are signaled by this stove to the watching world. Straw from old wine boxes is mixed with the unsuccessful ballots to send up black smoke. A successful ballot will be marked by white smoke. In the square outside spec What the narrator says here is not quite right. The ballots are always burned after every second balloting. When no one received enough ballots, wet straw is added to the ballots, which produces a thick, dark smoke. On the other hand, if a new pope is chosen, dry straw is added which produces pure white smoke, easily distinguishable from the first type. It's a very simple procedure. Anyone can try it themselves in their back backyard. Right. Attention is concentrated on the thin chimney atop the Sistine Chapel to the right of St. Peter's Basilica. It is almost noon when the first puff or fumetta appears. It's white. This is the first fumetta which appeared shortly before noon on the first day of balloting, Sunday, October 26th. The second fumetta, which we will see shortly, appeared at 5.55 p.m. and lasted a full five minutes before turning dark. It is important to note that at the previous papal conclave, which elected Pius XII, the white smoke burned for only two minutes. Excitement fills the square until the second a black puff emerges moments later. Rebuffed enthusiasm makes the deadlock of the cardinals seem all the longer through the succeeding ballots. This footage was taken by journalist Jacques Perrault and produced and broadcast by French Radio and Television Broadcasting. What you are seeing now is footage from the fateful Sunday evening in October 1958. Over 200,000 people are gathered in St. Peter's Square awaiting the new Pope. Little do they know, as darkness falls on Rome, that an imposter is on hand waiting to claim the chair of Peter. This is the very clear emission of white smoke which lasted for five minutes. Naturally, the cardinals and the men at the stove can hear the chorus of 200,000 voices celebrating the news. If a pope has not been elected, then it would be time to throw some wet straw into the stove and change the signal. But the white smoke persists. The announcer on Vatican Radio, Padre Pellegrino, exclaims, 
The smoke is white. There can be no doubt. A pope has been elected. Reports go out around the world that a new pope has been elected. Vatican officials scramble to their positions to greet the new pope. The crowd looks to the balcony where the pope should appear within 20 minutes. But no pope appears. Later that evening, Vatican Radio announces that there had been a mistake and that no pope had been chosen. At the time of this event, it would have been inconceivable to most people that the election of a pope could be suppressed in such a way. But looking back over 50 years of destruction, many are arriving at this moment as the pivotal event in the decline of the church. The smoke signal was no mistake. Someone became pope that night. The subsequent question is, who was it? As mentioned before, Cardinal Siri was the man most people thought would succeed Pope Pius XII. We will now turn to two other sources who claim that Cardinal Siri became Pope that evening. Our first source is FBI consultant Dr. Paul L. Williams. Williams quotes two State Department declassified files in his book, The Vatican Exposed. In 1958, when the cardinals were locked away in the Sistine Chapel to elect a new pope, mysterious events began to unfold. On the third ballot, Siri, according to FBI sources, obtained the necessary votes and was elected as Pope Gregory XVII. On the next page, Williams continues. On the fourth ballot, according to FBI sources, Siri again obtained the necessary votes and was elected Supreme Pontiff. But the French cardinals annulled the results, claiming that the election would cause widespread riots and the assassination of several prominent bishops behind the Iron Curtain. The next source is best-selling author, Jesuit, and former papal advisor, Father Malachi Martin. In an interview in the late 90s, Father Martin was asked if there was any truth to the rumors that Cardinal Siri was elected pope. Father Martin gives a very frank response. The truth is, he got sufficient votes twice to become Pope in two countries, but he refused it. At least two, if not three, but he refused it. And he made quite clear, talking to us after those two countries, that yes, the votes were there, but he refused to take them. He refused to take them. When the interviewer asks why Siri refused, Martin says, I think mainly out of fear. I think his family was at stake. He was a Genovese family. They were fishermen originally, very extensive family. And um, he, he felt that there was too much physical and social danger for his family if he bucked the system. And remember that the two, the two uh, conclaves I'm talking about is the conclave of 1958, which elected John XXIII, and the conclave of June 1963, which elected Paul VI. And they are very political conflicts. The interviewer then asks if Siri refused because he thought he could not be an effective pope. No, no, he felt that they wouldn't let him live. They were bent. Remember, the whole, the whole thing was planned. They were, they were bent on changing the church. And they weren't going to allow Siri in because everybody knew what Siri would do. He'd simply put on his uh, coat mail, he'd put on, take his bat legs and go out and cut off heads. Siri would not make a compromise. So I think that uh, he said, no, I can't do that because my family will suffer. And he had a large family. So he wouldn't do it. The conclave of cardinals has reached an agreement. The ancient signal to the world comes from the Sistine Chapel. Habemus Papam. We have a Pope in the traditional phrase of centuries. The throngs who have waited in the square of St. Peter's rejoice with half a million Catholics around the world. Elevated to the papacy, Angelo Giuseppe Cardinal Roncalli, shortly before his 77th birthday. Chosen after one of the shortest electoral conclaves in 600 years, he will reign as Pope John XXIII first pontiff to assume the name John since the 14th century. By the time the new head of the church appeared on the balcony of St. Peter's, 
one of the greatest crowds in Vatican history, over 400,000 jammed the square, with traffic snarled for miles around by those hurrying to be present. One of his first acts as Pope was to deliver an appeal for world peace, this being after his initial appearance, and delivery of the papal benediction to the throngs present to acclaim him.